I'm Richard Brown from the Mississippi Entomological Museum at Mississippi State University, and I'm here with Christy Yeager uh, to make this presentation. During this presentation, I will talk about identification of the superfamily Noctuoidea, and then we'll cover some of the inclusive families. Well, first, superficially, Noctuoidea have four wings and hind wings that have different colors and pattern. It may just be a plain pattern on the hind wing. It may be pink or yellow or some other color. And this is in contrast to such things as sphingids, which a sphinx looks like a sphinx, or saturnids, often with eye spots. And geometrids often have a pattern crossing both forewing and hindwing. Now there's exceptions to these. This is one of those 75% rules. Uh, but it doesn't apply to all the species. And crambids and pyralids, some of them have a noctoid looking appearance, but they have the scaled proposis. The key identifying feature of noctoidia is the presence of a tympanum on the metathorax. This can usually be seen at the intersection of the abdomen and the thorax. You can see the opening and perhaps a hood that's covering this. Uh, often with a, a small brush, camel's hair brush, you can remove uh, excess scales to see this opening and the membrane <clears throat> inside. Now the larvae have crochets in a series rather than in a circle. Of course, there are other families that have uh, crochets in a series as well. The noctuoids <clears throat> have a cubitus vein that appears trifid in notodontidae. That is, the cubitus splits to form the first two branches, A1 and A2 of the cubitus, and then the M3 vein is close to the cubital veins, closer than it is to the M2 veins, so it appears to be three-branched in notodontity. In the other situation, the cubitus vein appears to be quadrifid or four-branched, and this is where the M2 vein is closer to M3 than it is to M1. This includes the families Eribidae, Nolidae, I won't be saying a lot about Nolids, but they include some pest species, as well as Noctuidae. In the past, we treated the Lyman Triidae and Arctiidae as, as separate families. They are now considered subfamilies of Eribidae. Notodonids, again, have the cubitus three-branched, they have a, a long abdomen, something I notice in working with preparing specimens. It's a robust and long abdomen in contrast to many of the noctuids. Their antenna is pectinate in males of many species, but again, there are exceptions. The larvae have secondary CD present at least on the prolegs, and the A10 prolegs are modified with the crochets being reduced. And often you see the larvae of notodonids with the head and tail end raised and uh, assuming this posture. The larvae feed primarily on trees and shrubs. There are some genera with uh, gregarious larvae. I have seen groups of these notodonid larvae on oak trees and they're bobbing back and forth all together synchronously when disturbed, wobbling. And it's quite an alarm when you see a, a large mass of these larvae wobbling back and forth together. With Eribidae versus Noctuidae, the, the difference is based upon venation in the hind wing. The cubitus appears four-branched in the hind wing for Eribidae, including the Lymantriini, Arctiini, and some others. A four-branch cubitus in the hind wing. In contrast, the now restricted Noctuidae only has a three branch cubitus. So we will learn in the laboratory how to identify these veins and to examine them and make a determination on whether or not it's a noctuid or an arebid. Within the arebidae, the first subfamily of, of note is the Lamentriini. Again, have that four wing cubitus four branched, and the antennae are often uh, bipectinate. And if you note, with the antenna, at the tip, there are one to three spinules at the tip going off at an angle. Now the gypsy moth has one, 
whereas the other genera will have two or three. The abdominal tufts on the first or second segments of the abdomen are present in some species, not all. Also a feature is that the forewings often have tufted scales. This is true of some nododonids as well. And the proboscis is usually reduced. The larvae have secondary seedy that are often in tufts or tussocks, hence the name tussock moth. And they can be urticating, causing a rash on the skin uh, from their stinging effect. So uh, one should be very uh, careful in handling live larvae of this uh, subfamily, Lamentriini. A distinctive feature, of course, are the reversible glands on the abdominal six and seven segments that are very distinctive and in uh, the top right photo you can see them actually being a red color. The adults superficially often have spots or a stripe down the midline of the abdomen. The hind wing is often red to yellow with spots or bands. They're rather colorful moths and are popular among collectors because of their diversity in patterns. The larvae have secondary CD in groups, and the CD, if you look at it under the microscope, are often plumose or have short little barbs. The larvae can be solitary or feed in colonies and in webs of trees, such as the fall webworm, where you can have uh, many, many larvae expanding, covering additional leaves. The larvae can be recognized by having the heterodious crochets. That is, they are abruptly longer in the middle, whereas this is not true of the other groups that I'm talking about. And the Arribidae, in addition to including Lamantriani and Arctiani, also includes 16 other subfamilies. And just some have mentioned uh, the Herminiines are very common in forest where they feed on fungus that's, in, that's uh, involved in uh, the leaf decay. Um, they are quite diverse throughout uh, the United States. A second subfamily are the underwing moths, uh, the subfamily Erebini, and they are again popular with collectors because of their bright wing patterns. The Noctuidae, in the restricted sense, they're the most diverse family of our Lepidoptera. Uh, we have in America, North of Mexico, over 2,500 species, and more are being described almost every year. There's a lot of common names for them from loopers, cut worms, army worms, fruit worms, uh, and many others. They have a diversity of patterns and shapes as you can see in this image. There are, in addition to the pest species like the army worms and bud worm, you have some that are brightly colored with yellow hind wings and very atypical of the typical noctuid moth that we think of as being a drab and dull species. Now Noctuidae are all quadrifid in the forewing, four branched, and three branched in the hindwing. These can be broken into various subfamilies. The first of these are the Plusiaini. These are the loopers. There's many polyphagous pests in this group. Many of the adults have uh, silver spots and marks. These are often UV or Y-shaped. Hence, we have one uh, pest, uh, the Y-shaped uh, moth that uh, we survey for. The Noctuini include the Spodoptera, the army worms, and at times you can find these caterpillars uh, crossing an area in large numbers, hence perhaps the name army worms. This subfamily, which is the largest subfamily, also includes the cutworms, and there's a large number of genera that are that include cutworms, or caterpillars that will climb plants, cutting off a portion of the plant, or even coming out of the ground, the subterranean cutworm, and cutting off the plant at its base. So while you've got your home garden, one night you wake up the next morning and everything is mowed down by cutworms. Some of these develop in tremendous numbers, and species like Euxoa, Oxylaris, can develop populations in the millions, to the point that even bears will feed on them. The Heliothyne perhaps is one of the more well-known subfamilies from the standpoint of the pest status of the bowworm, Helicoverpa, and budworm, the Heliothus. The larvae of both of these will feed in flowers and fruits, 
which is true of many other species, not only in these genera, but in uh, related genera of the Heliothyni. And here are some references that uh, you may want to examine uh, that have more detailed treatments of these groups than we have time to do today. Thank you very much. Are there any questions?